Hi everyone, welcome. It's great having you here today with me. It's time for me to remake my avocado soap. I've run out. As a matter of fact, I had the wrong count on Etsy, which I've done before because I will pull from orders to fill um, my grab bag sometimes. And then I forget to go into Etsy and remove them from the individual counts. And so it can give a false count. And I realized I thought I had like 25 bars of avocado and I only had one. So it's time to remake my avocado soap, which is one of my favorites. And it is a favorite of a lot of folks. And I think it's because avocado is so rich in its own fats. The fatty acids in it are so good for skin and well, just take an avocado and rub it on your skin. Feels wonderful. And there are lovely benefits to it. I can't do that. Now, let me explain. I can eat avocados all day long. I can dribble them down my chin. No problem at all. But if I take avocado and I rub it on my skin, I break out in terrible hives. I have no other allergies that I know of. Well, other than chemical allergies. And I've often suspected that it might have been because the avocados that I got as a kid in California were a different variety of avocado. And maybe now I'm not allergic anymore, but I'm too much of a coward to try it and see. But, but I don't have a problem when I use avocado and soap. And I suppose that's because the saponification process, the lye, uh, pretty much cooks the avocado. And the cooked avocado, while it has many of the beneficial constituents of raw avocado, it doesn't have some of the uh, chemical makeup that exists in raw. So there's something about the cooking process of avocado, whether you cook it at home and I put it on my skin, no problem, or it's cooked, quote unquote, by the lye in soap in the high pH, doesn't it gives a lovely reaction and I love using it actually so anyway what I've done here is I have some olive oil and I have four avocados in here um, I figured you didn't want to watch me peeling avocados again and these were really ripe they're not rotten or anything but they were very ripe avocados perfect for making guacamole or something like that you don't want to use a hard avocado in for your soap there are a couple good reasons for it but primarily it's it will be grainy and gritty in your soap because the it is not completely ripe yet and there's more solidity in it and it takes it longer to break down in the soap and so it can be a little uncomfortable so a good ripe avocado is ideal Okay, so what I'm going to do now is first of all, get that piece of peel <laughs> out of there. There we go. And I'm just going to give this a good mixing with some olive oil here just to get it well blended. And then we'll put our soap together. So here we go. All right, so it's very nicely pureed now. And I'm gonna let this sit a little while before I strain it and get it ready for our soap. So now I'm going to prepare my butters for this particular soap. I really like to make the avocado soap as rich as I can because I believe that it deserves that. The richness of the avocado itself blends so very well with cocoa butter mango butter and shea butter and so that's what i'm doing now is preparing it i'm weighing out the different butters here got my scale here and for this large recipe i'm adding in Let's see, 11.75 ounces of each of these. So right now, 
I'm just getting the cocoa butter weighed. And then we'll get them on the double boiler to melt. And I have been asked, oh, that's perfect. Nope, a little more here. Excellent, there's our 11.75. I've been asked before, can you microwave butters? The straightforward answer is yes, you can microwave them. Nothing's gonna prevent you from doing it. The problem is I'm now adding in the mango butter, which breaks so easily. I just love mango butter though. Our body just accepts it so very easily. Um, why wouldn't you want to use the microwave? Well, the way that it can overheat and fracture the actual oils and butters can be detrimental to them and cause, well, if they uh, don't cool quickly enough, they can become grainy. Now, it's not as much of an issue in a soap as it would be in lotions or salves or balms and that sort of thing, where graininess definitely would be something you would not want. But in addition, you can take away some of the natural constituents of the soap, the of the butters. Um, they're natural emollient and humectant qualities uh, can be affected by overheating. So it's not so much that it's a microwave, it's the fact that you may be getting the oils way too hot. A little more there. Perfect. Um, and that really is the main concern, is that people overheat oftentimes uh, when heating in the microwave, where over slow double boiler, you can monitor the temperature so much easier. Okay, I'm going to cut my shea butter now. And I love uh, the quality. It isn't just uh, the things that I've previously mentioned here. It, another thing that these add, first of all, the soap <laughs> hardens much quicker in the mold, but also it lasts longer in the tub. Now, what some people have said, rightly so, is that adding these butters and things to soap can cause extra soap scum in the bath or the shower. Yes, that is true. That Especially if you're super fatting, more specifically if you're super fatting, but to me, it's a small price to pay. I mean, just simply wipe down your tub or shower uh, as you normally would with uh, a rag and you know soap of some type um, if that's really a problem. I personally don't find it that big of a problem. I, I clean my tub every week, so it's not a big issue. I really haven't. But one of the things you can do to counteract that is to add citric acid to your soap. So I will be addressing that as we move forward here. I need to get these melted and then we'll come back. All right, so I've got everything pretty much ready here. These are my butters and my oils here and I'll put what those are on the screen. They're the usual suspects, <laughs> along with the butters that you saw me working with earlier. This is my ah, good old Texas avocados that have been blended with avocado oil that I'm now going to add in to the other oils and butters here. Now, keep in mind, because avocado is a natural product, that it will brown in soap. It won't stay this beautiful avocado green. I truly wish that it did. But from previous experience, I've learned that can be a bit tricky. So I have some of my 
good old standbys here, a mixture of powdered spinach, parsley, wheatgrass, and spirulina. So that I'm going to give a good blend into my oils before we add the liquids to it. Right, so I think it may be a little soft right now, but yeah, oh yeah, it is. That just falls right through it. So maybe I should wait. But there you have it. One advantage, I don't know if that's an advantage or not, but <laughs> when making a single color soap, you don't have to show every bar, I mean it's not going to vary <laughs> or should not vary uh, <laughs> unless there's a surprise inside i had a soap uh, here i'll tell you a story this was long before youtube i made a soap for a married couple this was in california actually long story but well i'll tell you the most interesting part and there was a long plan to make them a soap. My mother actually at that time was going to make the soap for them and something had come up. She was a part of, she was, as I recall, she was raising money also for some charity and had to travel out of state, as I recall. And because of that, uh, was unable to do it, so it fell upon me. She left a plan for me, and that was all great. I really had no issue with making the soap. Uh, I followed the design plan, the colors that the bride wanted, and actually the groom, too. This was one nice thing about it, is both the groom and the bride were involved in the process of designing what they wanted in the soap and they were giving this out these were for her bridesmaids and uh, different people that were going to be at the wedding I'm not really sure that was please keep in mind we're talking about nearly 40 years ago oh my <laughs> anyway all looked great I actually, this was again way before YouTube, before even most people had any kind of internet or anything like that. Different time. No cell phones. <laughs> Some people had car phones at the time, but, but I was filming it with a camera. I still have the film somewhere, which I need to have put on digital. I have a couple, actually, of videos from when I was a young man where I made soap. And it was just for posterity, for myself, so I could go back and look at a design or a color. 
I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic. As I said, long story. And it's because of me for no other reason than I tend to make stories very long. But as I stated, I was filming it. And somehow, so I'm cutting the soap. And I got about midway through the soap and I hit something in the soap. I could not figure out what was going on because I didn't have anything like this. This was just a knife. It was a knife and a board set up. My mother did have a little bit more elaborate thing she had made by a machinist, but I didn't have access to that. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off topic here. So I'm cutting through the soap and I hit something and I finally just forced it the knife through it and the soap kind of broke apart when i opened it up the camera lens cover i don't know how had fallen into i guess the mold that i was using i don't think it fell into the soap batter because i would have noticed it when i was pouring it but you would have thought i would have noticed the lens cover so i thought about it maybe after the fact after the soap was in the mold it fell in i don't know whatever happened <laughs> it was ruined like four three and a half to four bars were ruined and it was just a disaster i quickly made some more which there was an understanding that it would take time before the wedding for it to cure and it to be ready to use this sure does smell good i just wanted to toss that out there this smells delicious that mix of essential oils was just divine um lesson was learned to be very careful to not leave your soap in a place where things can fall into it or just be very careful, especially when it's for something so important, such as someone's wedding. <laughs> so, not to suggest that hasn't happened to me again. I was making some soap not so long ago. I've got these other three loaves to cut, but I was making some soap. And same sort of scenario. I was cutting it and it caught on something and it was a piece of plastic um, that had come off of the essential oil, off the something similar to this. But there was pla like a plastic ring around the top of like a protective plastic you had to peel off. Somehow that had migrated into my soap either into the batter i don't know how it got in there to this day that was just a mystery to me but i don't know why i'm picking that up i wanted you to be able to see it but i want to thank you all it was a lot of fun i love making the avocado soap this one i think i'm going to call autumn avocado just due to the time of year and the avocados are so lovely they they I'm not going to say that Texas avocados are better than avocados from California or avocados from Mexico, but I am going to say that they're just wonderful. So if you get a chance to try some, please do. I think you generally would have to go to South Texas to get them because I don't think that there's a big market outside of Texas for them because uh, Mexico and California have that market covered. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope you have a terrific day, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.